This is going to be the last video for the blog before I actually uh, push this website to production. And we are going to add pagination to the home screen of the blog so that if there's too many search results, the user can kind of page through them. So let's go to the code. I'm going to close everything because there's a ton of stuff open right now. And uh, the first thing we need to do is go into home screen view. So coming down below kind of all the stuff that we have so far, I'm going to create another section for uh, pagination. So page equals request dot get dot get. And uh, so I want to get the property page and uh, set a default value of one. And actually, I want to change this to do the same thing. So I want to say get dot get get the uh, get the value of Q. If it's nothing, give it a default value of nothing. That will prevent any issues with uh, empty parameters and things like that from the URL. So uh, actually, I'll do the imports first because we're going to need to import a couple things. So from django.core.pagination, import empty page, page not, not an integer, integer and page in, paginator. So that should be everything we need. Now coming back down to the pagination section, I want to do blog posts equals, uh, or blog posts, blog post paginator equals page and paginator. I want to pass the blog posts. This is a this is all Django stuff, by the way. So you can look this up on the Django documentation under uh, pagination. Now I want to specify a default uh, blog posts per page. So the number of blog posts that I want displayed per page, I'm going to create that constant up at the top here. For testing, I'm going to set that equal to one. But once we know that everything's working correctly, I'll set that to 10. So just to start, we're going to set it to to one. Now I want to try and accept. So inside the try, I want to write uh, blog posts equals blog post paginator and dot page and then pass the page number. If there is a <clears throat> oh, losing my voice here, if there is a page, not page, not an integer, then I want to do blog posts equals blog post paginator dot page and do blog post per page. Now I want to do kind of the same thing. I'm going to copy that, do another accept, except now I'm going to catch a different error or different exception. This is going to be that empty page exception. And inside here, we'll do something a little different. This is blog posts, blog post paginator dot num pages. So just kind of as an FYI, this sort of structure right here will be the same for any pagination that you set up on any of your website. The only thing that will change is, of course, the parameter names and then the query set that you pass to the input to the paginator. So literally the only thing, if you were getting a list of users, this would be like users and you would change all of these to say users. Everything else here would be the same other than the names, of course. Uh, now I want to do context and I want to pass the uh, blog post as context. So actually, I'll take this and just put this down here. So that is good. I think that should be good to go. So now I'm going to build a snippet for this pagination, which we can include on our home page. So I'm going to go into blog, go into snippets, create a new file, control S to save. This is going to be blog, blog post pagination.html. And I'm going to copy this from the source code because I am lazy and I don't want to type this out on camera and I want to save time. So I'm scrolling down to the source code, going to where it says pagination and custom queries. I think that's what it's called. Uh, let's see, pagination and custom search queries with Django. Yes. So let's go into, I need to go into blog, go into, uh, go into templates, go into snippets and choose that blog post pagination snippet. So I'm going to copy everything here, go back to our project, paste that in, save it. And I'll just talk about this really quick. So um, basically, this is a view that I built, uh, which I'm going to actually, you know what, I'm going to wait. And I'm going to show you when we demonstrate it, because uh, right now, if I talk about it, it's just going to there's just too much here. Lastly, we need to go into home.html and include the snippet and include the, the pagination itself. So down below where it says end blog posts or end blog feed, I want to add the pagination. So I'm going to create a, another section here saying pagination. Uh, let me know in the comments if you can hear the chickens um, from, I, I live on a farm and the chickens are going crazy outside. I'm curious to know if you can hear them. 
if I'm if I'm quiet for a second, you, I think you can probably hear them. Anyway, so I'm referencing our blog post snippet, blog post, or our, our uh, pagination snippet, sorry, HTML, and say with blog posts equal to blog posts. So now I'm going to save that. Let's go to our project, and I'm going to take a look, and we'll talk about that snippet that I that I mentioned. Looks like we got an error. Of course, nothing can work the first time. No module found. Django core pagination. Let's take a look at the views from Django core pagination. This should be paginator. So changing that, saving it, going back. Whoops, going back to the project. Refresh. Still no good. What else do we got here? Uh, cannot import name page. Not There's a spelling mistake there. It says note an integer it should be not an integer so saving that looks like it's running now all right so oh so that's not right so that's what the pagination is going to look like but uh, it's obviously in the wrong place it should be at the bottom of the page so we have some some uh some styling issues in home.html this should be inside of the blog feed so come in there and i paste that in now let's go back to the project refresh there we go, it's at the bottom. So this is the pagination. Right now we have a pagination set to only one post per page. That's why you only see a single one. If I go to page two, there's our second post. I can go to the previous one. And uh, we just don't really have a lot of blog posts. I could actually create a bunch. I'll create another one. Let's create uh, just like some random stuff. Give it, give it some, give it an author and save that. So we have at least one more. So we have three. So now we have three pages, as you can see. Page one is the newest one, which is the one I just created. Page two is the second newest one, and we have page three. So this is how pagination works. Uh, things to notice is up here, um, because we're doing get requests, I can also do this with a search query. So if I, I guess, um, if I search just query equal to G, that's obviously gonna find a whole bunch of results because every post has a G in it. So what happens if I go to the next page? Well, then it concatenates it. So I have query equal to G and page equal to two. Query equal to G and page equal to three. So how is that working inside of Sublime Text? Let's take a look at the blog post pagination. So the way this works is there's a bunch of if statements. Here's if the blog post has a previous page, if the, uh, this will loop through all the, the number of pages, um, and then this is if they have a next page. So if we look here, we have uh, the, this is if there's a previous page and uh, if there's a next page and if there's a last page, that's kind of what all these different if statements are for. The kind of the most important thing I would say is the href tags. So notice how I did this. I put uh, Django if logic inside of here. So question mark, because this is how the URLs have to be designed. If the query, so if there's a query, I need to set Q equal to that query and, oh, sorry, then you end, end if, um, then also you need to set the page number. So page equals to the page number. Um, this one is similar, but because we're in a different if statement, it's slightly different. So again, if, the query, if there's a query, set the Q equal to the query, end if, then the page is set to a different parameter because of this uh, different if statement. So this, this section changes so this part of the URL changes depending on, oops, depending on the if statement. So um, this is this is different than this if statement. So also this page kind of parameter right here is different. Uh, the last two down here are again this start with the same way. If there's a query, show the query, and then the page parameter is dependent on which if statement you're in, and uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. I want to mention too that. This this pagination setup can be used exa in exactly the same way in all of your Django projects. Obviously, you just have to change like the the query set, change the names of the parameters, um, and then this this is going to be identical. This will literally be completely 100% identical. You can just copy paste this right into your project uh, as long as you have these um, this all set up correctly. It will work perfectly. So now that we've tested it, I'm going to set this to equal to 10 because we want to have 10 blog posts per page. So if I refresh that somehow, I got an error. I don't know how that happened. Oh, page, not an error, this one. So delete that, save, go back, refresh. 
there we go. So now we'll have 10 per page. Obviously, we only have three blog posts, so there's only a single page. But if you had more than 10, you would have pagination. So that's, uh, that's going to be it. That's kind of uh, everything you need to build a blogging website with user authentication and uh, the giving users the ability to create, update, retrieve um, their blog posts. So now um, in the next couple of videos, what I'm going to do is push this website to production. So I'm going to push it live on using the hosting provider DigitalOcean. That's who we're going to be hosting with. I think DigitalOcean is awesome. I use it for my hosting for codingwithmitch.com. And if I was to build a website, I would 100% use them. Um, and I'm also going to be setting up Amazon Web Services because in a production environment, we need somewhere to save the images and all the media that you're going to be having on your website. So, uh, so that's kind of the stuff we're going to be working on in the next videos. Then we'll build the REST API, and then we're going to build an app to communicate live with that blog on the internet.